singing on what shall I say unto the Lord what I have to say Apostle, can you hear me? I can hear you, Director. Okay. Without wasting my time, I'll hand it over to you. All right, God bless you, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we bless your name, we magnify your name, we lift your name high. We have sought you above Father God, we have sought you above thrones, we have sought you above names. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great commission, for this wonderful platform. Father, Lord, that you might reach the Lord. All over the world, it is no opportunity to be taken lightly. We hereby declare you glorious. We declare you awesome. We declare you mother. Father, Lord, take all the glory. Take all the honor. Take all the adoration. For you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. As I thank you, my mother, Lord Jehovah, be that of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. For this wonderful opportunity, we thank God for the International Ministry of Jesus, and we thank God for the life of of the senior prophets, Brethren the Ebenezer Session, where I in the hand of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, um, rest upon him and guide him and give him all his paths that I do. And so we pray for the prosperity and the success for hope for life, all the workers and the people. May the Lord bless all of you. And tonight, my last uh, honor goes to all my viewers and all my listeners all over the world, all over on Facebook, on social media, on the radio, and on. Just pay attention. By the time this service goes over, you will see the hand of the Lord moving in your dimension. But the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Because tonight, by the word of God, God is going to break every mountain. God is going to break every higher crown down and every imagination and talk to the obedience of Christ. When your own obedience is for you. So you first need to obey God so that God will fulfill his part. Serving God is a covenant. Serving God has your part to play. 
it is like a contract. You do your part and God does his part. In the book of Isaiah chapter, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, it's Psalm 89 and 34. It says, my covenant will line up break. And the words which are gone out of my mouth, I will not utter. He said, the promises of the Lord are yea and amen. He said, when you shall hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord I God, and you will obey to do all that he commands you, then these blessings will follow you. So before you can think of the blessings, you should check your level of obedience. Your level of obedience determines your level of success in God. It determines your level of breakthrough you come in, either in the area of health or blessings, like in the book of Exodus, chapter number 23, verse 25 down. He said, You shall serve the Lord thy God, and then He shall bless your bread, bless your water, and then take sickness far away from you. Then Nothing will be barren, and then miscarriages will be absorbed. And then it says the number of your days will be fulfilled. So look at what only service to God means. Are you getting it? When you pay your tithes, he says, I will open the windows of heaven and I will pour out a blessing that your house will be too small to contain. And then I will rebuke the devourer. Devourer could be sickness. Devourer could be uh, to be accident. Devourer could be arm robbery, theft. You see, all these things that do not give glory to God are practices of the devil to steal you and to rob you of your glory. When you want your life to increase and flourish, Psalm ninety-two, verse number twelve. He said, if a man be planted in the house of God, he shall flourish like the palm tree, and he shall grow like the cedar of Lebanon. So it's just the matter of playing your role and allowing God to have his role. Like the Bible says in the book of Habakkuk, I will stand upon my watch, and I will wait to see what the Lord will say. He said, write the vision. Make it plain upon the tables so that you may run that read at it. For the vision is for an appointed time, and though it starries, it will surely come to pass. So, what are we saying here? You need to hear the vision, it comes by hearing and by hearing. You need to pen it down, you need to write it down. You need to keep notes, like Apostle Paul said, bring me the freshness and especially the notes. So you need to keep notes. So as you read it, you need to run with it. It is not enough to be a reader of the word. Then if you show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, and I think dividing the word of truth. So when you hear and you read, you need to understand the content of it. The understanding of the content will enable you to put it into practicality. And practicality will lead to your results. So you don't just stay and blame God for your carelessness and for your inability to obey Him. Believe in God, you shall be established. Believe in His prophet, you shall prosper. So these are just principles of life. Knowing that you are saved guarantees your health. This is the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And then he took our infirmities, and then by his stripes we are healed. Like Psalm 102, verse 3. He says, He has washed us, taken out the iniquity, and then he has healed our broken wounds. So when you are saved, sickness is taken far away from you. Tonight, every area of your life that you are whether it is in your business, whether it is in your career, whether it is in your marriage, in your relationship, 
in that family, in that education person, in every aspect of life, that things are not going right, that things are going haywire, with the hand of God, with the spirit of God, with the power of God, that is contained in his word, appear there tonight, and let the foundations Hear the word of God in the name of Jesus. May you be favored tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, I want to speak on a special topic of the And it is titled Purpose. Purpose and Pursuit. What is purpose? Why do we need to talk on the topic purpose? Why is it so vital to understand purpose? Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the, the law happy is he. Listen to me. Purpose is the essence of creating something. Purpose is the reason for which you are created. Purpose is the reason for which you are born. Purpose is the reason for which you are a black man. It is the reason for which you are a white man. It is the reason for which you are short. It is the reason for which you are tall. It is the reason for which you are educated. It is the reason for which you are uneducated. It is the reason for which you are poor. It is the reason for which you are rich. When you understand purpose, you will know that your level of life needs a change. It needs an addition or it needs a subtraction. When a man does not understand purpose, anything at all can happen to him. But when you understand purpose, life will be fulfilled. Irrespective of this education, things, irrespective of poverty, curses, or whatever. The purpose will, 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 will reveal to you your place on earth. Purpose will determine your standing. Purpose will determine your area of excellence. Hallelujah. It is what you are intended to achieve. The reason that explains why something is needed. It is your purpose that determines whether you are useless or you are useful. If a man is useless, it is because he has not discovered purpose. And if a man is useful in every aspect of life, it is only because the man has fulfilled purpose. Are you getting it? Yeah. Now, when we are talking about purpose, like in Isaiah chapter the number 42, the same thing. The Bible says, these people have I formed for myself. God says, we are formed. Like he said in the book of Jeremiah, even when you were a clot of blood in the mother's womb, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet. And in chapter number 29, verse 11, he says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. The thoughts of good and not of evil. To prosper you and give you a future hope. And a end. That is what we talk when we come to purpose. Somebody was known from the womb. And God was revealing to him his purpose. Look at somebody like um, uh, Gideon. Gideon was a mighty man of valor. But the Midianites were tormenting them. The Midianites frustrated them. The Midianites depressed them. The Midianites humiliated them. Until an angel came and told Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. Go in this your strength and deliver your people. He said, is God with us? And we are suffering like this. He didn't know his purpose. He was the savior of his time. But for lack of knowledge, my people perish. People are taken into captivity because they lack knowledge. 
that place you need a teacher. Hallelujah. Yeah. Look at when uh, this guy, David, came. David didn't know that he was a king. Inside of him, some passion was there. Inside of him, something was radiating. But parents pushed him to be a shepherd. Knew why he was ordained a king. But thank God that every man that acquaints himself with God, every man that searches for God, every man that knows God, God makes him know his position. God sent someone to the house of Jesse to anoint a king. When after several many people came, even the prophet Samuel thought that the flesh would determine the kingship. But God says, I look at the heart. It is the position of your heart that determines your purpose. Because as the man thinketh in his heart, so it is. So what you think in your heart determines what you will become in your future. What you think in your heart is exactly what God is placing you to do. David was seriously defending sheep in the forest. One saw that had the people to run was using them for personal aggrandizement. Are you getting it? Somebody like Mary, when an angel Gabriel came in the sixth month and said, ah, You are favored among women. Highly favored among women. Blessed are thou among women. Mary didn't know she was blessed, but an angel revealed. That is what's happening if you are closer to God. He said, I have formed you. So people that reject God, people that reject the will of God, people that reject the mind of God, people that reject the knowledge of God, are not be able to discover their purpose. Listen to me. Even Saul, that was the first king of Israel, in the book of Samuel, chapter the number nine, he was the son of Kish, the least tribe of Benjamin. And from Benjamin should know him again. Because there was a prophecy by Jacob when he prayed for his 12 sons. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. His eyes shall be red with wine. And unto him shall the garden of the people be. So naturally, it is Judah that is ordained the tribe of Israel. But how can God start from the time of Benjamin? So Saul didn't know that anything would happen. He was busily searching for his father's donkeys. Many people today are searching for donkeys. Meanwhile, they are born kings. Many people are searching for money. Meanwhile, there is a certain gift inside of them that could be a billion that they cannot search even when they say. Listen to me, discovering purpose is what brings you joy. It brings you peace. It makes life fulfilled. So the Bible says, as Saul was searching for a donkey, thank God he was working with a servant. He, every man of purpose needs to surround himself with people that understand vision. The servant that followed Saul carried enough money because he knew that human intellectuality is before. But God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly about all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. What did the Bible say? After searching for the donkey in several many places, the Bible says Saul didn't find the donkey. So he has given up and had wanted to go back to tell the father he hasn't found the donkey. And the father said, why don't let us visit the prophet? He says, you don't have money to visit the prophet. Because before you can meet a prophet, you need to carry some seed along. He says, I knew that we may fail. So I prepared in advance. It was a servant that was making sure. That is why the Bible says that there is a great error under the sun. And it starts in the number 10, verse 7. He says, I see servants upon horses. And then I see kings walking barefoot. The servant of Saul had more wisdom than Saul. That is why a servant of Saul, which was David, became a king. Because there are many kings who don't have the ability of kings. 
Their thought is not royal thought. Their thought is not the thought of giants. Their thought is limited to carnal things. Their thought is only limited to celebration of power. Their thought is only limited to the things they see. Their thought doesn't go beyond the future. Tonight, may the Lord open your eyes to the future. In the name of Jesus. Get into the prophets. The prophets do so. The donkey is found. But you enter into the house with me. The Lord has ordained you a prophet. And has ordained you a king. It was a blow. But his purpose was suddenly discovered. Listen to me. You need to discover your purpose. In the book of Judges, there was a man called Barak. Deborah called him and told me, go, 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 go in this your mind and fight for the nation. And then Barak says, except you go with me, I will go. The prophet says, I will go with you. These are people that discover purpose. And they know that without a teacher, purpose is not important. Every purpose needs a teacher. Every purpose must undergo a training. Every purpose must undergo a process. Look at Joseph, who at the age of 12 knew his purpose. By dreaming and dreaming, he knew he had the capacity to sustain his family. Joseph, through the knowledge of God, understand that the stars and the moon were bowing down to him. People that didn't understand purpose were seriously criticizing him. They were seriously trying to kill him. They were seriously trying to get him off the scene. But thank God, Joseph understands purpose. The Bible says in the pit, he maintained his relationship with God. In slavery, he maintained relationship with God. In forty he said, I will not do this thing to sin against God. In the prison, the Bible said God was with him. And the man prospered. When he appeared before the king, uh, the king saw a prime minister inside of him. Meanwhile, the family saw a prisoner inside of him. The way God sees you is different from the way you see yourself. That is why you need to draw closer to God. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Whosoever openeth, I will come in. Tonight, may your heart be open to receive the miracle. May your heart be open to receive Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. These are just few examples. Jesus came upon the earth and said, Know ye not that I must be above my father's people? At the age of 12, he was seated with elderly men in the temple. His parents were searching for me. He told him, My parents are dead that I listen to the word of God. My brothers and sisters are dead that are in this class with me. And I told the parents, Know ye not that I must be above my father? At the age of 12, he knew his father. He knew that there was a heavenly father, a father that nobody can do away without. The success of Jesus' ministry relied majorly on the knowledge of the father. Even when he was supposed to go to the cross, he had to pray blood until there was an answer from above. The Bible says God sent Moses and Elijah to strengthen him to fulfill purpose. Because purpose can never be fulfilled except there is a teacher. Receive strength from above. The name of Jesus. In the book of Genesis, chapter the number one, verse 26, let's look at the purpose of our creation. The purpose of a pen is to write. The purpose of a book is to be written in. The purpose of a book is for life. The purpose of an iron rod is for construction. The purpose of a sleepers is for walking. The purpose of a car is for traveling. It is not for luxury. It is not just for decoration. The purpose of money is for spending. And that spending must get a particular area. Because when there is no determined purpose for the expenditure, it is called a waste of money. It is called a waste of resources. So the purpose of human being must be determined. Let us check in the book of Genesis. Take your Bible and let us go. Chapter 1, verse 26. 
And God says, let us make man in our image. After our own likeness. Let us make man in our image. So you are created in the image of God. You are created a replica of God. You are created a fruit of God. And the fruit of every tree is the fruit that came from the seed. So it is that seed that you find inside a fruit. The fruit of an apple is from the apple seed. So God is our major root. God is our origin. God is our biological father. Our biological mom is the one that travailed for the first man that gave birth to other men. He was the one that brought the idea. Listen to me. Most of the time you go to shops and you buy some stuff. And you realize that there is a manual attached to these things. And the manual always determines the use of the thing, the span, the lifespan of the thing, and then how you should manage it so that there is no immediate effect. The best person to determine our use, our lifespan, our success, our essence of living is the most high God. Hallelujah. Let us make money in our image and our life. And then let us give them dominion. This is the main purpose now. We, we are here to domain. We are here to exercise authority. We are the only creator of God that has sense. We are the only creator of God that can apply wisdom. There are some people that are training dogs to be useful and more. But the most wisest dog cannot be compared to a wise, to the, to the foolish madman. I said the wisest dog that have been trained to become like a human cannot be compared to a madman. Because the madman is in the image of God. Hallelujah. So human being that has the spirit of man is born to exercise dominion. By our knowledge, by our understanding, over the fish of the sea, we were born to be fishermen and have something to do with fishes of the sea. So human beings can survive when they can study about the sea and then the aqua culture, and they can invest their time and energy into that. It will end up a blessing. Over the fowls of the air, we have ecotourism. There are a lot of things you can do with the fowl of the air. And over the cattle, you can be a shepherd. You can have a lot of things to do with the cattle. We have milk industries that majorly rely on cattle. So see, there is no poor man on earth except you don't understand the purpose of living. This is the primary purpose of living. So nobody is supposed to suffer. No, no, nobody is supposed to struggle. Over all the earth, all the earth means you can build. So we have construction there. You can be a businessman. Everything associated to the earth. What are the things your eyes can see? God told Abraham, from where you are, look north or south or east or west. Or. Whatever you see, all the lands you see, I am giving them to you. So the farther you can see, the closer you are to destiny. So if your sight is blinded, like in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4. He said, if our gospel be hid, it be hid to them that are lost. Those whom the God of each age have blinded their hands, that the light of the glorious gospel should not shine upon them. Are you getting it? 
So if people are kind of, people are running around and are always complaining and say they don't have helpers and they don't see the best helper is a man that has been covered his essence of it. God says you don't need a man to survive. Go on to him that trust in man. Human beings will deceive you. Human beings will lie you. Human beings will turn you upside down. But God will never lie. But the strength of Israel never, he never fails. It's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should say it and change his mind. He is God and forever his word is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. Over all the earth. No, you can limit yourself. It means you can just enter into science, learn something about nature. People develop a lot of technology, communications, transportation, and uh, other ways of life. And they are making billions of money. They are exercising the dominion of their brains. Are you getting what I'm saying? Dominion is a gift of God. When you have your essence of life and you apply your sense to the right thing, there is no way you can be called a failure. Yeah. And the Bible says, over the creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So we have zoology, the study about animals. You can do some poultry farms. You can go for hunting. Esau was a hunter. Jacob was a shepherd. Oh, yeah. Abraham was a merchant. Cain and Abel, one was a farmer and one was a wearer of animals. Adam was a tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. Purpose is defined. Just to radiate the glory of God. Just to radiate the wisdom of God. When God created the earth, there is nothing we see today that is created. The rest of the things we see is just the dominion given to man. See, in life, life is full of discovery. If you can be very industrial, if you can be very innovative, if you can be very creative, if you can be very fabricated, if you can just be skillful, if you can just acquire some knowledge, if you can just acquire some education, and especially in the place where God has directed you, you shouldn't leave a useless man. You shouldn't leave a hopeless man because you are in the direct image of God. And there is no way you can discover purpose except God has told you. That is why the Bible says the secret is belong to God. And they that are revealed belong to we and our children. Hallelujah. Moses didn't know he was born to rule. 80 years he was still in the wilderness. In relationship. In the wife's family house. He never owned the house. And until he met God in the fire, he never knew he was born a political leader of his time. Even when God told him to go, he says, have you examined who you are sending? You know I'm a stammerer. You know I'm uneducated. Do you know I'm not qualified? But purpose doesn't respect all those laws. It is the day you discover that you begin to succeed. Seventy years, Abraham knew his purpose as a father of many nations. Five hundred years, Noah found favor before God as a preacher of the gospel and as a carpenter. Hallelujah. You need to be blessed tonight. Now some early people and their purpose, like in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, and God took the man and put him inside the garden, particularly the garden of Eden, to work it, to work it. 
and to keep it. God took man. So we are here to keep the garden. We are here to work the garden. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number 9, verse 10, 11, whatsoever your hand find it doing, do it with all your minds. For there is no knowledge in the grave. There is no hard work in the grave. There is no business in the grave. There is no education in the grave. See, the Bible says, in all labor, there is poverty. But the talk of the lips tend only to do You see, he said, remember now the creator in the days of your youth. If you don't remember God now and you do, you may say you may not have delight in your purpose again. You may say, I am not educated like Moses. Hallelujah. Ah. So he was to keep it. Genesis 6, 14. God told Noah, make an ark. So for the lifetime of Noah, he was a dedicated carpenter, a passionate carpenter. And he didn't need to compare himself to Adam. He didn't need to compare himself to Abel or Abel. He didn't need to say, my father is a doctor, I need to be a doctor. See, this is the mistake people are doing. There is money in doctrine. So I want to be a medical doctor. Oh, being a pilot makes you a famous man. Oh, I want to be like from his nineteen. The best you can be is like the person. The version of you has never existed. Search for your purpose and discover it and work with it. When you discover your purpose, you can have mentors in that. But don't just stand up and compare yourself to others. They that compare themselves to others are not ones. Hallelujah. As earlier at that time, some people have dominion over their life. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. And the whole earth was in one language. They were of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass that they found a plain in the land of Shina and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make break and bend them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build us a city. When men came, they were anything like a city. But dominion, dominion, caused them to come together and mold bricks. This is called collective purpose. We know that purpose is individual, but there are some institutional purposes. There are some organizational purposes, like a business or a company, a church or any kind of group or club. It needs a group of people with one motive, a group of people with one vision. Nations are not built by only one person. Nations are built with collective ideas and this is what happened at that time hallelujah they were brick layers and they built us and i believe by so doing there would have been a lot of job while some are building some people will be selling while some people are building some are also bringing ideas and those ideas are going to attract some money don't only stay in life and be searching for money. Money is not a foundation of life. Money only comes to supply necessity to your foundation. When you discover your purpose, it's very expensive than getting money. Because a man that has money without purpose is already a waster of money. 
like that rich fool that has a lot of money expanding his bands his silos were increasing he said tomorrow my soul eats and go god told him bring that your soul because he wasn't he wasn't living a life of fulfillment. i believe there was something for which he was not living because god cannot just be angry and take somebody's soul it is like the fig tree that was on the earth that fig tree was here to bear fruit the bible says when jesus looked upon it all that trees brought forth fruit but that particular fig didn't bring forth jesus curses to die whenever you are in life and your purpose is not you can die anyhow but a man of purpose will live long because people will protect you god will protect you and even people you are being a blessing to will be a protection around you abraham was a merchant genesis chapter 13 verse 2 abraham was very rich in cattle silver and in gold look at this is a man that god told him come out of your father's house your nation your people it means that 75 years in his nation was a wasted time outside purpose. Within 25 years of meeting him, he had a name called a father of many nations. If Abraham had decided to remain in that his family house, I believe that Abraham may have heard God by evangelism. I believe he heard a preacher and followed a preacher. I believe he may have just seen somebody like me preaching tonight. And he paid attention. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. The word of truth. So Abraham heard the word of God and heard it. And he became the father of faith. Some of you don't want to hear the word of God. You just want miracles at instant. Miracles don't link into purpose. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 3 15, I love that scripture. I will give you shepherds after my own hand who will feed you with knowledge and wisdom, understanding. Hallelujah. Other people like Job, Job was a witness, David was a shepherd. Hallelujah. So just find your area. Of and the number one way you can discover them is by prayer. Let God reveal to you. He made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. When I was growing, I just love education. As a child, I love book, I love reading. So when I finished junior high school, I come from a very poor background. There was nobody to help. So what happened? I insisted I have to continue to school. So one auntie came and said, no, you have to come and stay with me so that i will cater for you so after 10 years you can learn how to be a mechanic i look at myself i realize i don't have that energy for mechanic. mechanic may be a good job mechanic is a good job it will earn me money in fact with the level of my understanding if i am called a mechanic I would be a successful one for that matter. But I would have cast my star. Being a mechanic and having not become a preacher. Do you know why? I feel so much fulfilled when I see a soul saved. Even when I don't make money, if I don't make faith, if I don't have a big church, 
a soul is important to me. It pains me when people die without God. It pains me when people are struggling only because they have not come to the knowledge of God. It pains me when people are in sickness only because they have not discovered God. So I see myself as a light to them. But how did this come about? I refuse to be a mechanic. I came to a city, Accra, and then someone helped me to further education. When that person helped me, he introduced me to one nice business called Luxury. And in Luxury, as a young man, I was seeing money. But my soul was more satisfied. So whenever I am in the shop, I realized something was lost. My uncle will not go to church. He will never talk of God. He will just not tell you anything concerning God. And I realized that people that were coming to play business with us, these lottery guys and lottery men, and all these lottery acquainted women, all of their lives are reducing everything. And I see myself as a first person. I want them to be a success in life. So one day I jump into a church. I just love being in a church. From that day, whenever we close from lottery, I'll run to church. I enter church and I feel so simple. I just like everything about it. I'm not a church type, but I became a type. Because I realized there is something that I was hearing that was building something. So what happened? I bought a Bible. Then I started reading. More of the time before then, I would open my little charts. As young as I was, I would read this chart more than five thousand. And the more I look through, the more I give you. I had money, but for him it was not in view. So by reading, by reading, by studying, some lights begin to look out. One day I was in that shop, and a lady was passing by. And I saw her with a very big swing leg. And then she was walking on one of the legs. And by grace, I told her. I want to practice what I was reading. And I said, Sister, do you believe in Jesus? She said, Yes. I said, Do you believe? Pray I can heal you. She said, Why not? I said, What happened to you? She said, I had a dream. I was beaten by a spider. I woke up my leg and saw it. I said, Bring that your leg and let me carry it. And I took a small inch of chunk. And then I lay hands on that leg. And I said, In the name of Jesus, you sickness, I am judged by Jesus Christ. We are here by his trust. This lady doesn't know. But I know that we are returning from the curse. Get out of hell now. I said, Go, you are here. The next day she came rejoicing. I knew that something is happening inside of me. So I built on the revelation that if I could not know. More and more of the word of God, I would be a blessing to more people than ever. One day I was at my church, and I saw a very young man, a man that he grew very loud and was it. People were trying to change him, he was in danger. I was just a believer in God. 
not fall victim to have robbery or victim to um, this kind of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, you are covered with the blood of Jesus. Please let's speak again. May the hand of God preserve you. May the mighty hand of God protect you. You have anything to sow into this ministry? Your numbers are on the screen. Copy of those numbers. May your life never be the same. God bless you. God bless you, Director. Amen. Amen. Apostle, may God also bless you so much. May God bless you. Fellows, as we always say, um, in case you need a prayer or counseling or anything, Apostle number, if you were in Ghana or calling from U.S. or outside the country, it's plus 233554. 083790 plus 233 554 083790. That's Apostle Eric Brown. If you're in Ghana, you know what to call 0554-083790. 0554-083790. You can reach Apostle for any prayers or any counseling or for any advice. May God reach and bless you. Same time next week, we will meet with Apostle. Apostle, may God bless you too. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord.